Can you own a Tesla without having a home charger? All right, welcome back to the channel. Dan here for Tesla. So the last few weeks I've been staying at this hotel and unfortunately it does not have a charger for my car. Uh, and obviously without a home charger, it begs the question, can you own an EV without having a home charger? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you what it's been like for me for the last two weeks of having, not having a home charger and having to rely on public chargers. Now, yes, it is possible, but how annoying is it? So we're gonna get into it and talk about all my experiences over the last two weeks of not having a home charger, uh, all the experiences in terms of having to find a public charger, uh, the cost associated to it, as well as the convenience factor and everything else that goes with it. So stay tuned, uh, let's get into it. Before I do though, please take a second and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. You get better content, better stuff, so subscribe. All right, so the number one thing about having a home charger is obviously the convenience of it. Basically, you have a fully charged car every single morning when you wake up. Now, if you don't have a home charger, obviously you will have to rely on other things. Uh, so we are talking about public charging networks. Now, uh, obviously this Tesla supercharger network is amazing and for road trips, there's nothing beats it. However, for a daily uh, charging option, I don't think supercharging is the way to go because one, it's expensive and long-term it's not good for your battery to supercharge that much fast charging. Uh, obviously in a quick pinch and you need to charge fast, uh, then definitely supercharging is your option. However, uh, long-term solution, if you can get a like level two charger, uh, that's probably your best bet. Now, the problem with that is convenience and location, uh, depending where you live, depending where you work. Those are the two situations where you want to have a public charger nearby at least, because uh, those are basically the biggest hours where either you're sleeping at home or you're at work. Those are the biggest hours that can take up the most charge. Uh, without that, you're basically going to be doing uh, what I was doing, like basically like, uh, you know, you're like a crackhead fix trying to get the next fix, looking for public chargers everywhere you go. So if you're going to a mall, hey, is there a charger here? If you're going shopping somewhere else, hey, is there a charger there? Uh, so basically, you don't want to be in that situation. You want to have a some sort of public charger, at least nearby, so that you can uh, leave your car there for a few hours and not worry about it and get a significant amount of charge. So thankfully, at the hotel I'm at, uh, there's one across the street, which is pretty convenient. Uh, so I've been using that, and so far, it's been working okay. So after convenience, your biggest factor is going to be cost. Obviously, having a home charger is the most cost-effective solution. However, outside of that, uh, like I said before, you're probably not looking at a supercharger because it's so expensive. Uh, you want to find a level two charger. So even level two chargers, the one I'm using is $1.50 an hour, uh, which is pretty on the low side. I've seen some like $2.50 an hour or $5 an hour. Uh, so $1.50 is pretty good. Uh, so just looking at $1.50 an hour, I've spent $72, which is kind of insane when you think about it. Then I've used 304 kilowatt hours. If you compare that to home charging, where I have an ultra low overnight rate at 2.8 cents, that would equivalent to $8.50. So the one thing with level two public charging is you're going to need quite some time to charge. So you gotta do a bit of planning. It's not like a supercharger where you're there for less than an hour and you'll be back relatively close to when it's done charging. With level two, you gotta think, how long can you leave the car there for? Will you be back in time for a reach charge limit? For me, I left my car overnight, so would I be awake in time to go and plug before ILPs kicked in? And yes, there's quite a few idle fees. Some places it's $5 an hour, which kind of adds up. So this kind of speaks to the convenience or lack of convenience when having to rely on public charging. So another thing to consider is, I don't know uh, in the US, or but in Canada at least, uh, we only recently switched to per kilowatt billing. Uh, so I don't know if the public chargers are gonna switch to that as well, uh, but most of the ones I've seen are charging per hour. And, um, the one I've been charging at is rated for 6.6 .6 kilowatt hours. However, uh, I'm only getting five, which means it's lower charge, which means it's taking longer to get that charge, meaning I'm paying more by the hour, which is not really fair. I should be getting charged for uh, exactly what the energy I'm using. But uh, so that's one thing. I don't know if uh, people in the US, can you correct me if uh, you guys are charging per kilowatt or is it all per hour just because it's uh, the third party charger? At least the charging experience has been pretty easy. Uh, I've been using ChargePoint primarily, and uh, you have a uh, card in your phone, and basically you just wave your phone in front of the charger, and off you go. So it's one step above the supercharger where you're just plugging in. So one extra step. 
If you take one thing from this manual, this is it. So you see how it's, the charger is currently locked? Uh, can't move, can't take it out. But if you hold the lever, it actually will unlock the charger. And you gotta hold on to your adapter, but basically I've always been using going through the app and unlocking the charger that way. Uh, I thought this was just like a lever or something to unlock it. Well, I guess that makes sense. Anyways, well, if you didn't know, now you know. So can you own an EV without having a home charger? Well, in my experience, yes, you can. Definitely doable. I've been doing it for two weeks, um, not having an issue. However, it's going to depend on a couple of factors. Uh, so one is basically how often or how much you drive in a day. So the two weeks that I've been here, I've been really night and day because the first week I didn't have to work. Uh, therefore, uh, I was kind of pounding around here, not putting too many miles in the car. So I think in the entire week, I only charged, had to charge once. Uh, basically to fill my car back up. So if you're in a situation where you're not driving a lot of miles, uh, you can definitely get by without having a home charger installed. Uh, you can just, you know, drive until you're relatively empty and then uh, spend a few hours and fill up somewhere. Uh, now the flip side of that, the second week I did have to work and I drive about 50 miles a day or no, 50 miles a one way. That's what's 100 miles a day. Um, and I had to charge at least, um, at least, every second day, if not now every sec every day, because the you know weather's getting a bit colder here. Uh, so I did find myself having to charge every day. So thankfully my charger is across the street, so it wasn't that big of a deal. However, if you don't have that, if you don't have a charger, at least near your home or uh, near your work, and you drive that many miles, or you drive a lot of miles a day, it would be really difficult. That is kind of like the one situation where I recommend you probably need a home charger installed. And if that's not the case, if you can't get that done, then maybe an EV is not for you. And yes, the cost is going to be more. However, uh, there are a few free charging options. My gym offers uh, the first three hours are free. So if I don't drive that much and I go to the gym every day, that's pretty much all my charging that I need. So you can basically have free charging. So uh, basically just do your research in terms of use apps like uh, plug share, uh, or you know, there's EV companion, and there's tons of apps available. Uh, so do your research in terms of finding out where the charging networks are and see if it's doable for you, because it definitely is. All right, thanks for watching. If you liked this video and found it helpful, definitely give it a thumbs up. And also don't forget to subscribe and really important, hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I release a video, which is about every week or so, but you don't wanna miss out. Uh, so definitely hit that notification bell so you don't get, no so get notified. Anyways, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next week. In the meantime, drive safe and drive electric. So. Uh, we're going to get into the video of like exactly what to do. Or can you go a few days without charging? That's really going to factor that in. Uh, the other thing is, uh, the other thing is, so as I said, uh, super, so as I said, supercharging, probably not your best option. One, it's expensive and it's not good for your over time. So as I said, super. So if you don't, so you don't, if you don't, so uh, it's pretty, been pretty easy for us so far because you're basically, uh, you're still at pub plugged in. So you want to go in your app charge point. So let's compare, so let's compare that 50, so let's compare that $54 to exactly what it would cost me charging at home.